Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another fabulous class for our open house. So we are with Dane Clement this morning, who is going to tell us all about art transformation for dye sublimation uh -huh. in Photoshop. So hello. 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 Ooh, ooh, so I could, I could. Uh, wait, let me let me get you out of there. Um, ah, OK, OK, so, I got it. There was yeah. there was two of you for a second. So hello, <laughs> Dane. How are hello. you? I am good. That's good. 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 Um, so you have been um, first off, I absolutely love your classes. I learned so much in, on them and you're oh, actually you. doing two classes you're going to be yep. doing photoshop today and then tomorrow you're going to be doing affinity which i'm very excited about yeah and um and for a giveaway today you are giving away your dye sublimation book which is actually not even out yet so right I'm we're excited about that you are wrapping it up right now as we speak fantastic all right. Well, um, I, with all that being said, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah. So I wish we were not having problems. I can't share my screen. It is still giving me, I've only done these hundreds of times, so I don't know what's going on. Share screen. Here we go. No, it's not doing it. So um, oh, we've already checked, unchecked. Tell me to go to system preferences and there's nothing. I'm doing different here. Let's see. Uh oh. Um, if, yeah. Can you open it maybe in another browser? Do you have um, maybe Explorer or something? I don't, I don't. I'm on a Mac. Hang on. Uh oh, I, I may disappear, but I can come right back. I think I just found the. Okay. Well, he's gone, but that's okay. I'll talk to you guys for a little bit. Um, so, hey, everybody, how you guys doing? What have you liked so far today? What's, what's been your favorite? Also, don't forget, Bo and I will be going live. Um, uh, We're back. Friday live. Hey, he's back. All right, let's see. One more time here, right? One more time. Oh, look at that. That what? is beautiful. That Yay. is beautiful. We love to see it. <laughs> All right. So cool. Let me do this. Let me go to Photoshop here. And um, so, yeah, so um, thanks for hanging out at the class. Sorry about that technical difficulty there. That was all on me. Nothing that Sprite did, all on me. <laughs> I've only done these things hundreds of times, and yet I still, you know, seem to find problems sometimes. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this image, right, and we're going to pull bits and pieces out of it because uh, you can't always use stock art like you see it or even photos and things like you know, just because it's this way doesn't mean that you're locked into it to always be that way, right? So we're going to do this. Uh, and what this is, this is a layout for a Tumblr. Um, and I'll show you how I did it and how we're going to do it. So we were talking about um, the giveaway today. So I am wrapping up right now my artwork for Dice Sublimation book. So it's probably about a month away. Um, and the giveaway would be one of these if you want to wait for it. And I also have artwork for White Toner and DTG and Vinyl Cut and Corel and Illustrator. So um, I do, I've do. i been at this a long time. We create artwork for all these different decorating techniques. So, uh, But if you want to hang out just about a month or so, um, maybe a month and a half with the printing these days, uh, then um, you'll get the new copy of the book. can always send a PDF to you when we're finalizing. So we're going to do this, right? And um, we're going to pull pieces from this image. So... Uh, knowing that, let's get started here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of different selection techniques. Now, Photoshop has a lot of selection tools, right? Some are great. Some are almost great, right? And some are not really that great. <laughs> uh, so um, what I'm going to do, you see I got my layers on. It's got one layer. This is the yard. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to use one of the selection tools and we'll grab all those pumpkins, right? And I have a Cintiq that I'm working on, so I will be going back and forth between my awesome pen and a brick, right? So this is not so much, not so uh, easy to create artwork using a mouse, I'm just saying. Uh, these are Wacoms, so uh, you can have a, you know, there's different type of tablets there. So I'm going to go ahead and come here, and we're going to go to Quick Selection Tool, right? 
And I'm going to zoom in on this guy here. I'm just going to, whoops, not what I wanted to do. All right, so what I'm going to, with the quick selection tool, the way it works is if you just click inside and drag, it's going to automatically seek the edges, right? So you can kind of see here where the marching ants are right along the edge of this pumpkin, right? And I can go in and I can fine tune it, right? So the way the tool works is I don't have to hold any shift key or anything like you might do with, um, you know, a tragic wand tool or a lasso tool or something. Um, this one, I'm literally just clicking and dragging. And I can do this kind of, this part is easily enough done. I'm using my mouse right now kind of thing. I'm just clicking and dragging to grow that selection and it's finding the edges, right? You can see here. Um, and this is one of those tools where it's, it's almost great. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you see it, it just like bounced out of, uh, up here and grab, started grabbing the foot of this other character, right? So if I wanted to, I can hold my option key down. And I don't know if you can see that on screen, but I'll make my brush larger for a second. So there's a plus sign in it. That's what allows me to just click and drag. So if I hold my option or the alt key on your PC, I can take away from, uh, from that selection, right? And you can go back and forth like this. This is the part where I would, I guess I would basically say is not the greatest necessarily. You'll see it in one second. Uh, I'm going to try to go ahead and get this one. And I'm just, I held my option key or the alt key uh, to get that. So we're almost ready. So he, it's a, it is a quick selection tool and it does a killer job as far as that goes. Um, and sometimes depending on the edge treatment, uh, we can have some good luck or maybe not so much good luck. So I'm just going to copy this and let's go to this witch's brew tumbler. So um, actually, let's do this instead. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm going to turn all this stuff off because we just recreate it so I can show you how it did it, right? So here's the, here, oh, by the way, here's the template. And all I did to get that was literally went to um, the Condi site and found the, the Tumblr that I have and downloaded it. So it was just kind of a mask. So everything that you see here is what's going to, is where your print's going to be, right? So um, I can put that at the bottom to get us going. I'll put a white background on there uh, first. Uh, we'll go back uh, to this guy here. We'll copy it and come over to the Tumblr. And I'm just going to paste it. All right. So it did a pretty decent job because of the the edge, um, and I'm going to show you some some things on the next one. Now, this is one of the things I think it kind of there there will be some cleanup to do, and that's normal, right? You want to make sure that you know expect to have cleanup uh, on things. So I just grabbed my eraser tool, and if you see how soft it is, we don't really notice it too much on this particular piece of art. But in a minute, when I show you the other character that we're going to grab out of there you'll see um where it kind of falls short so this looks pretty good and the reason it does is because the brush that was used to paint these things is really rough uh that kind of thing right so that works in this instance and let's go ahead and zoom back out here so that's sitting there ready to go now we're gonna go get the the witch out of here right so same thing right if i use the quick selection tool and just come over here and sort of click around, right? We're just click and drag, and that subject is going to find the edges, and it's going to sort of stop there, just like this. So it sees the color transition, right, from the black to that blue, uh, that sort of thing. And I'm just I'm moving this thing around so my uh, my marching ants are on the edge. So if I make my brush size a little bit smaller here, I can kind of try to capture that piece. So we get the side of our hair there. Remember, get this little part and just keep clicking and dragging. And it's just going to fill in um, my image, right? So it's, it's doing all of that. That looks pretty good. But I'm going to stop right here because I want to show you something else. So it's selected. If I copy this and go over here and I paste it now, right? Turn off these pumpkins. Uh, and if I zoom in, it, sometimes it works again, sometimes it doesn't. It gets kind of fuzzy. For what we're doing, I don't think it's a big deal, but pay attention or figure out, you know, um, when you're working on things that you may want to not use this tool. Um, and it's, this thing has a hard edge, right? So it's kind of like a comic style artwork with a good 
I would say black line, but it's not all true black. We it's just use the um, use the line work to contain the coloring. But you see what I'm talking about here, right? It gets fuzzy, really dirty and fuzzy, and we'll have to you know clean up some of that stuff here. Um, just I'm, you know you can just erase it out. You can use a lasso tool, right? So I can grab my lasso tool and do this. Right, once it's selected, just delete it. You know that kind of thing. So you can go walk around this guy and clean it out. Or what I rather would would rather do here is I'm gonna throw this guy, this one away. Let's go back here to this one. And anytime that I have a hard edge on an object, and that means anything. If I'm gonna do my coffee bug, by the way, excuse me. Hmm. Still early, and it's still my only my first cup. So uh, if I have a hard edge product, right, and I can see and it's totally defined, um, then two things. If it's one color, you can use a tragic wand tool, which is a Scott Kelby term, which is awesome. Uh, There's a magic wand tool, which is terrible, by the way, just saying. Uh, but what I like to do is create a path for it, right? So if you look over here, I got my witch. I've already cut a path on this just to save time, but I'll show you how I'm, how to do it here, in like a, a little bit of it anyway. If you notice over here on the left-hand side, I'm going all the way. I'm not really following along the witch because I'm saving time. I'm literally just cutting into the clear, transparent pixels because there's nothing there anyway. Only place I need to really worry about is when I come into here and where the where the transparent pixels meet the image or the whatever it is I'm going to take out of here. So I'm going to go around her just like this. And the reason... I like to do it this way is a couple reasons. One is once I do the effort, and by the way, I timed myself on this. It was 15 minutes. So it takes a little bit, but not crazy time, right? But once you do it, you can save it in your path, uh, panel, and you always have it. A little trickier to do in Affinity, and you'll see that tomorrow when we get to that class. But um, today is Photoshop, right? So totally different deal. But once you create it, that path, you can keep it, you save it, and it's always there. So... Uh, now, if it wasn't there, we're going to pretend it's not. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get my pen tool, right? And we'll start. Um, I'll do just a hat area. I'm not going to do the whole thing since we already have it and we got a lot to do in this particular thing here. So um, I'm going to zoom in. And there's no rhyme or reason to the way I do stuff, but I come in, I always want to find a starting point. And so, and what that means to me typically is a corner, some sort of corner. I can start here. I don't, I just normally typically wouldn't start in the middle of a line, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm going to just follow it. Now, what I find myself doing all the time is right now I'm going to, I just started, I clicked my point, right. And I made a new node and I held my mouse down and I pulled this Bezier handle out. So what we can do is we can use the command key or the control key in your PC and you can select just that if you want to fine tune it, right? You want to move it around a little bit that got like this. Um, if I'm going to come over here and click on another uh, point, if you notice it already came out with a turn, right? So I went from here, went into that node with a curve. So it's going to want to come out of that node with another curve. And these being about equal distance or so apart, it kind of did it close enough. But I find myself getting rid of those Bezier handles or this particular one and redirecting it. So, and you do that by holding the option key or the alt key so, and clicking on your node again. If you notice, see my cursor changes to that little, um, I forget what the name of that tool is. That's a convert point tool, right? So it's gonna make the node go into that point or I, if I, if it's not there and I need to get it out to, to, to shape the thing, I can go ahead and do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And right now I can go in any direction. I can literally come straight back if I wanted to, right? I don't want to, um, but it allows me to very quickly move around this image. And I'll, you know, again, since it's line work, I don't have to be extremely precise with it. It's got to get it close. And you don't want, so you don't want to, you know, take it forever, right? So 15 minutes, like I said, that was, that was kind of enough. So I'll hold my option key, click on it. And just these Bezier handles allow you to shape and form to what you're tracing. Um, my space bar, is, which I just hit there, that's going to give me my um, my grabber hand, which allows me to move it around on screen so I don't have to zoom in and out, right? So now you notice I'm kind of missing a pretty big gap. So if I wanted to, I can grab my command or control key and resize or reshape, I guess, these uh, handles like that and just get a better job, you know, Again, you just fine tune it like you want. Uh, we'll do this to pull it out. Grab her hand with my space bar. 
Now, notice that we overshot it here, right? So, go, again, go to my command or control key on your PC and uh, just trace it. And see, I did not hit my option key, so now I have to go back to my command key and readjust that line because it didn't it didn't go where I wanted it to. So um, it just allows you to fine tune and tweak, as you see here. Same thing here. I'm going to push this back. But what I normally do is I normally hit that option key or the alt key a lot, like right up in here. I'll do this. It gets rid of that one handle. So once you go into wherever you want to be, it's the next click that's going to be a problem. So if we came into that last point or that last node with a curve, then it's going to want to come out in a curve. So if I hit that option key or the alt key and click on the node itself, that one Bezier handle goes back in. The other one stays there because it's already sitting there. You came into the node, it's ready to go. But once we do it, we can go in any place we want, like straight the other direction or whatever it might be. So you can find you don't need to do it every single time, but you'll find that um, you do it quite a bit if you want to get accurate traces anyway. And um, almost done here. So you came out with a curve and I knew I was going to get a curve going back into that. So I just went ahead and did it. All right. So I'll just kind of do this and just fly through the hat part. Hold my option key, the alt key, make, you know, kind of get a starting a fresh line. Uh, same thing here. That's too much of it, the, the busy. Well, let's do this. Let me see if I can do that. It's such a long turn. Watch what happens when I do it this way. See it. Because that Bezier handle had so much space between the node and the end, I knew it was going to make a long swoop or a long curve, right? So you, the more you do this, this kind of thing, you're going to notice that, um, like, what happens and when you're going to, like, probably be, be better if you just hit the, um, the node and got rid of that key, right, like this. And by the way, Sprite, I don't know if you're still there, but I, I don't see the chats or the, any questions. So if you got any questions, you might want, if you can throw them in here, I'd... As I go, I'd be fine. All right, so I'm just cruising right along, and like I said, we're gonna we're gonna finish this up obviously in just a minute here. And while I'm doing this, finishing up this, if if you got any questions or need to touch, need to get a hold of me later on, just it, my email is dane at greatdanegraphics.com. Um. A lot of people are asking where they can get your books from. Um, actually, you guys sell the sell them, or well, you can get them from my website. Yeah. Yeah, we white. sell the white toner book. Um, we're, yeah. We're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to get some the the rest of them as well. Tell you what, I'll send you a copy of my dice up book when we get it, and you can tell me if it's any good or not. That works. <laughs> All right. So um, here we go. So this path is done, right? So. It's I created it. I spent the time on it one time. Um, if you come over here and just double click, I can name it hat, right? Oh, my keyboard's way over there, by the way, because my antiques in front of me. So I'm going to do this. Uh, so now I, it'll always be there as long as I save my file, which I get in the habit of doing quite a bit. Um, I can make it. I can select it um, by coming at the bottom of my um, panel, my pass panel. You see this little dotted or dash circle there? That's my marching ants, right? So if I click it, my hat selected. Now you just copy and paste it into whatever I'm doing. So just to show you um, that that I think is the better way to go as far as uh, these things go. So let's go ahead and get the witch since I did not get it. That's what I was checking. Go to my path, click on the witch. We'll select it, right? Go to edit, copy, and I can come over here to wor my working file, right? Um, I'm going to leave the pumpkins off for now and I'm going to go to edit, paste. And let's zoom out and we'll just kind of see what we got here. So the reason I like a path on a hard edge is because it's super clean, right? So walk around here. There is none of that fuzziness. Now, the quick selection tool works great if I'm going to pull a lion out of a jungle scene or a jaguar out of a jungle scene or something like that, right? Where, And I think it's probably done on purpose. The very edging is somewhat soft and it's not just a blur. It's not a simple... Um, you know, Gaussian blur, it's something else, right? Some kind of algorithm texture that they'd use. And I think they do it to camouflage. Like if you pull something out of one photo and you put it in another, if it's perfectly clean, kind of like this is, then it's going to look like a slice, right? Almost like a really bad movie edit where you, it is, you see it, right? It's kind of jolting. 
Um, when it has a small, slight blur, it sort of fits in with the background and it looks believable. So I think that's probably part of the tool's makeup, right, and the way they put it together. But um, when you're working with this type of artwork, it's not the greatest. So just wanted you to know that. Uh, but they're great tools for what they do, right? And um, I'm going to come in here and, you know, here's my pumpkins. So we'll go make them a little smaller. All right. So now the way I set my file up and um, – I'm going to create a group here, right? And I'm going to take, not this one. I'm going to put this one out. I'm just going to take all my other stuff, not the template. And I'll just put everything in this group folder. And I'll hide all my old work, right? So it won't confuse me. Because I am, I like painting on canvases. I like painting digitally with maybe three or four layers. I'm not a 50 or 100 layer guy. I can't take it because I don't have the patience for finding their proper layer to paint on. That's not me. So I don't like to look at all that stuff. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I have my template. We're going to turn it on, right? So that's my template. Um, I need all my artwork to be that I'm going to create to fit inside this box. Well, if you, if you think about it, if I just create this thing and it looks kind of like it is now big and put the all the way across the whole thing, when you look at your, at the tumbler right now this one i'm creating a design so i kind of want it to fit inside at least be able to see the whole thing even if it wraps some right because i do want some size to it but i want to kind of be able to capture the whole concept of the whole idea by looking at it, you know, from one plane right from one piece um, i will have all the bats if you remember the bats going around everything um, and the way we're going to set it up is we're going to set it up so it looks like a completely finished random texture right so the bats will not be cut off and you don't have to try to seam it. You know, sometimes you want to, you got to seam two pieces and you'll see that line going down. We're not going to do any of that with this particular design. We're going to have open holes. So when we put the bats, they'll kind of fill in the gaps and it looks completely seamed and it's pretty, pretty slick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my image about four inches wide, right? So um, this is an 11 by 17. So if I pull this, so it's eight and a half is my center line. Oh, there you go. I forgot to already put them in there. So this is what I'm going to work with. This is gonna, If I go from my center line, I can go uh, two inches out this way and then two inches out that way. That's going to be my four-inch seam, which is going to be a little bit larger. So it's going to wrap around the tumbler. It's going to look nice. Uh, so uh, here we go. So I'm going to grab my pumpkins first and Command-T or Control-T, or I can go to Edit down here and could a free transform. That's, what I just, that's a, my shortcut that I just used. And I use shortcuts all the time. Obviously, um, the more shortcuts you learn, the faster you'll be. Um, problem is, sometimes I use a shortcut and I don't remember to tell you. So uh, if you catch me doing that, stop me. I'll, and I'll, I try not to, but sometimes uh, it's just so much of a habit. I just click it away. So all right, I'm going to select my uh, witch layer here. Now, what I would recommend is it's much better to find out what these things are if you label them. Right. Double click it. I'm just going to do pumpkins uh, because the more you get, the more confusing they can be. So here's the witch uh, edit uh, free transform. That's that command T or the control T on your PC right there. Right. That will change. Let me uh, uh, do the size. Now, if you notice this boot, it's got part of the other graphic from the other image that blue. I'm not worried about it because we're going to hide. it. It's going to be sitting behind the, uh, the pumpkins a bit. Right. So we're going to do something like that. I think that looks good for now. We can always adjust later. So we're kind of focusing in on that main panel. Um, I'm going to put her behind the pumpkins. Right. Like that. And then we don't want to worry about that foot or that boot. Right. She's just dancing behind the pumpkin. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and just hit command H or if I go to my uh, where is it view. Right. My extras right here. See this. Short, all the shortcuts in Photoshop are on the right-hand side of these panels. So if you see a panel here, this is a command symbol on a Mac or a control on your PC, H. It just hides that stuff, right? So it's there, and I can always bring it back, and I can hit Command H on my computer, uh, my keyboard, or Control H on your PC, and it brings it back and forth if you just kind of want to see. But it gets really distracting to design with those things, so I try to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and uh, throw some type in here real quick. Um, all right, Cutlass is a font. I'm pretty sure it's a duh font, font, right? Dot com. Um, because that's where we get a bunch of fonts to work from. So this is going to be Witch's Brew. All right. 
that works. I had to hear all that clacking on my keyboard there. Uh, but now I've been using Photoshop since version two, like, like early 1990s two. So they just decided a few years ago to switch this on me. So I had to hold my shift key to stretch things and um, never had to do that before. I had to hold my shift key to constrain the proportions. Well, now they just decided to change all that stuff. Don't know why, but it drives me crazy. Now, everybody, I know I can change it to my, in the preferences, but when I'm doing a class here, I got to have to point that out. Because if I'm doing all it old school way, like I've been doing for 30 years and you're not seeing it done the same way, ain't going to work. All right, so my type I'm going to put to the top. Uh, actually, no, I want the type below the witch. I meant the witch to be on top. So there we go. Um, now, what I'm going to do, if I double click the T here, right? If we get the options bar across the top, I have this little T with this little hill thing. I can click on it, right? And I want to use these enveloping tools, which Photoshop has in it. A lot of people don't even realize these are there. Um, but it's the standard enveloping tools that you have in lots of other vector programs and whatnot. Um, and it's awesome because it allows you to create it's cool, easy text effects like this, right? Uh, and the bend here is how much of a bend you want on things. And you can get a live preview right there. I can see it. You know, I can go the other direction this way, right? So um, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to do it, you know, just a little bend on it. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, and we'll bring it back down kind of in position. And I may need to shrink her a little bit in a, li in a while. We'll, we'll find out, right? So let's go ahead and add some interest to the witch's brew type, right? So right now it's probably the smallest, weakest thing you can't really see. But if we go here and let's go ahead and add us an effect, right? So if you click on this little effects icon at the bottom of your layers panel, I'm going to do this so you, maybe you can see the whole thing. Um, what I want to do is I want to add a stroke to it, right? So I can do that. I'll click on it. Huh. And Photoshop remembers what you did last time. So I have my pumpkin selected. Don't want that on my pumpkins. I want that on my type. So I click on the type and do the same thing. Here we go. Uh, stroke, right? So it's going to outline it. So what I want you to see, though, let me zoom in on it a little bit if I can. Let's see. I want you to see what we're going to do because this is a kind of a neat little trick that I use a lot. Um, and uh, anyway, I think it's neat. You tell me. So what I want to do is I want to add a stroke to it, right? So normally if you add a stroke, it's a one stroke thing. And I'm just using a second one because I happen to use them a lot. Sometimes I'll use multiple strokes. Um, the only problem with that is it gets to be a lot kind of like layers and I don't like layers. So um, if I could change the color here and I can make it whatever I want, right? Like that. Uh, and I can change the size here and I can put it to the outside or the inside or the center. Um, but and that's all great. I mean, I'm, I'm adding a stroke there and I can put one behind it and we can make that one, you know, I don't know, black, whatever. You get the idea. So basically, back in the day before they had multiple strokes in the in a layer style, even before layer styles existed, we created multiple layers. So I'd have my witches brew the red part on one layer and I'd have the 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 pink or the purple there on a separate layer and then I'd take that layer and I'd grow it. So I'd expand it. So I had the face of the type and then the purple layer here and then another layer underneath that with the black like you see there and I'd push it behind it even, you know, even further wide. So um, th those are great ways to do it, right? But this, I think, is even cooler. And you can kind of get it all done in one shot. So this is what I'm talking about. So right now, if you notice, we have um, basically we have a black outline, a white outline, and a purple outline. And if you look at the way it was built, this thing was built... On, I got it set to the outside because I want the face of the type not to change. I want it to go past that, not inside of it or, you know, on a center line of it. Um, the opacity is 100. So the fill type, though, on this one is a gradient. And if you look, here's my gradient, but it's not it's not really it's not really a gradient right now. Right. So you see that. So my gradient goes from purple to white to black, obviously. Well, there's a trick to do it. So uh, let's just go ahead and do it. All right, so we're starting over. I'm going to show you how it was built. So in here, I have these boxes, right? So this side, I want to go to, what was it? Why It was black, right? So click here to change the color, come to black. We'll hit OK. Um, and over here, 
you select this little box right here, right? And you click on the color wheel there and you come in and you pick a color you want. So I like purple. Well, I need one for the white. So if I click in the middle here, I can do that and choose a white. Okay. So this is what normally you think of as a gradient because it softly blends. But another thing I wanted to show you here before, see this thing here it says shape burst. So if I go to linear, that's what it defaults to, right? Um, and it's, let's go ahead and change this up. Let's, let's do this again, right? So I got black there and I got white here. So there's my linear blend. It just goes from straight up to down. So knowing that, if I wanted it to follow the letters, which is what I want to do, I'm going to take this gradient and instead of linear, I mean, I can have radials, which will start in a circle. And if you see, it's solid, right? Because I have it set up that way at the moment. But you want to, if you go to shape burst, what that's going to do is going to follow the letters. So now I have three colors. And if I wanted them all solid like I do, there you go. But when you, when you don't have and when they're not, uh, until you set that up, I guess, the solid part of it, I'm going to show you how you do it. So there's your gradient. You can see it there. I'm going to make this one purple, right? And um, that one's black. I'll click in here, and I'm a, as long as that one's selected, I can change this color here and make it white. All right, so now it's following the letters, but it's all soft, right? Everything is uh, like a, like just airbrushy looking, see? Which, you know, might be what you want, and if it is, that's cool, you're done, but it's not what I'm looking for. So, so how do you get it to work. If I click in here and bring this, this black out this way, right? And I bring my white over this way. See, the closer you get, the tighter it becomes. So it's still not hard edged, but it's kind of fuzzy just a little bit. So as I keep moving them over, right? I can get kind of like right on top of themselves and it's super hard edged, right? So, but now I'm missing one here. So what I need is I need to put a new one and it needs to be another white one. And I got to take my purple over that way. Right. And just kind of move them both until you get a nice hard edge and you got perfect outline. So that's how you take a one stroke with multiple colors. Um, and I can add more colors. I can have as many colors as those little boxes in here as I want. And I can make that outline as busy or crazy as you as you want. But it's a really neat little trick. So um uh, and I can hit the, uh, the the new and I can save it and all that if you want to. Uh, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave it there. So now let's go ahead and put a drop shadow on here. And this drop shadow is pretty close, but we'll, I'll just go over them here. I, I get 100% on this one um, because I wanted to keep that comic style artwork, right? I can make it transparent, you know, any, any percentage that I'm looking for. Uh, my distance is how far it's going to be away from. Uh, you know, my type or it doesn't have to be type could be anything. Um, but whatever my object is, my spread is at a hundred percent because I wanted it hard edge again to follow that comic style. So if I wanted a softer shadow, see that I can do it this way. Right. But if I go all the way out to a hundred, then it takes just like we did with the gradient bar, it takes everything and just smashes. It so I got a good clean line because that's what I was looking for. Right. So that looks pretty good. I, I'll just go ahead and leave it like that. Um, you know, Photoshop used to have a, pre, a cool little trick where you can come out here and click and drag that shadow around if you want to tweak it and move it a little bit, uh, and they got rid of it. So go figure. Um, anyway, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to hit OK, and now we got our type, Command-0, right, um, which is right here, fit on screen. Command or Control-0 on your PC will we'll fit the whole thing on your screen so you can kind of see what we're doing. So now if you see, that's going to fit this Tumblr, this Timbler, Timbler, Tumbler, pretty cool. Uh, and let's get some bats in here. So if I go back to my other image, I'll deselect the uh, marching ants, right? And look, again, we're stealing pieces from this image, right? Just because I wanted to use them. I like them. It's super cool. They got these simple bats here. Well, watch this. Remember I said some, let's go to uh, the tragic wand tool, right? Magic wand tool. Cause I'm thinking that's solid bat color. I can hold my shift key. And I can click on this one and it finds the edge. I hit command C, right? We copy it. We come over here. Um, and I, let me go to my pumpkins layer and I paste it just so it puts it on top. Uh, I get my move tool, hit my V key and I'll bring it out. And that looks pretty good from right here, but watch this. Look at that. Yikes. Right. Terrible. 
horrible. So mm, cut the path and it's going to be a whole lot better. So sometimes those other tools work. Sometimes they don't. That's the least effective selection tool, by the way. So um, I just cut a path around these just to save us some time. Here is my bats. See that? Um, and I'm just going to select it. And this is what I'm going to show you, too. I wasn't too concerned about nailing it perfect, as you can see. See that? We came in, got some of the moon color back here and whatnot. Nah, no big deal, right? So it's no big deal because I can fix it easy. So that's why. So I'm, man, I'm going to go ahead and hit my marching ants. Makes that selection. Go to my layers. Right, it's selected here. So copy it, come back to my working file, uh, paste it, and yeah, get my V key, get them out the way so we can see them. All right, so now let's take a look. Well, it's a lot better, right? Because it's cleaner, and I'm I'm zoomed in like almost 225 percent here. But you can see some of that gray and whatnot. It still looks kind of ugly, right? So if I come in here. Well, I should be able to do it this way. If I hold my, if I mouse over my layer icon, this little square, right, the preview piece, and I hold my command key or control key on your PC and I click it, if you look at my mouse, it's changing my uh, cursor. It puts a little box in, the, in a little finger, right? So when I do that and I click it, it makes that selection. So if you notice, it's, it, it selected everything. It selected the little blue in the, you know, in the, when I created the path. So I have all that stuff. So remember, command or control H, right, will hide uh my extras which there we go and i can go ahead and get my brush tool so i'm gonna click on my brush um i can come up here i have a soft round brush that's perfect uh, not a problem we're gonna use it right so i'm gonna change um I'm, if you look at my my toolbar here in the bottom left it's, a, it's red and it's white right that's the red from the that i whoops i clicked the dot there from my uh, type color. So if I wanted the black and white, if I just hit my D key, it's gonna give me my default colors for Photoshop. So that's black and white. Uh, and then now, let's just make sure, yep, my marching ants are still there. All I did was I hit it, right? I just went to view. I'm not hiding in these extras. Uh, and then now I'm just gonna fill it with black. So this is a way you can clean up those edges and not really worry about it. if it's not a perfect um, path. Because when you you know to get a perfect path, you, it re, it's going to require time. I mean, you, the the um, you guys saw the witch took you know fifteen minutes. Um, I'm gonna hit my E key for my eraser. I'm just gonna get rid of his moon color and his in their eyes, All right? Just because I don't want those blue, I want them this white so they stand out. All right, so I would go back and forth pretty quick, you know, quite a bit here. So um. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them bigger. Command T, right? Or edit, free transform, and just make them a little bit larger, right? And I'm going to kind of put them here. And I'm going to duplicate it, right? So I got two layers, and I can move it down here. Uh, if I go to edit, uh, transform, and I flip it horizontally, right? It's going to do that. Um, so I'm going to... Duplicate that layer again, and I'll bring it down here, and I'll go back. Uh, so edit, free tra uh, transform, rather, flip horizontal, right? So I'm just kind of flip-flopping them. Now, I can do it even more so, right? So I'm going to. I'm going to just grab my lasso tool, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of merge all these layers together. So if I hold my shift key and click on these three layers, that's all my bats, right? So if I come over here, I can merge layers. So it's going to put all those bats on one layer. So now I've got my uh, lasso tool. And I just want to kind of change the shapes of them because I don't want them to be totally the same, right? Um, I can move it. So I'm holding my command key in order to be able to select just that one bat uh, like that. And then if I hit my command T, I'll go back to edit free, tra uh, free transform. Then I can just rotate it. Double click inside, deselect it, uh, and then grab another one. So I don't like again, you don't want them all exactly the same looking, right? So do this, get them there. We'll just, you know, change it up a little bit. Uh, let's take this guy and scoot him in a little bit more. Do we want maybe want him to go like real hard that way? Why not? 
All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to take this one here uh, one more time, and I'm just going to move it down a bit right there. Okay, so I have some sort of random pattern going. Now, what I'm going to do, since it's on my same layer, now I'm going to duplicate that layer, right? And I hit my move tool, right, so I can move those. And I'm just going to move those to the other side, and this is how I'm going to do it. So if I move my cursor, right, with my arrow there to – Right here on this line, I can click, hold my shift key, and stop it when it gets to that line, right? So now I have the bats in exactly the same place. So what we're going to do is just fill this with a bunch of bats, and then we're going to remove one or the other from either side. So I would probably leave this bat and take this bat out, and then you know leave this one because it's mostly here, and maybe take this one out. And what's going to happen, uh, let me see. We got like five minutes left. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and use my I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use my one I did before because I knew this would happen. So we're just gonna kind of randomly um, get the bats, uh, move them. You know, like just I'm gonna show you how to do one or two more, and then we're gonna I'm just gonna go to that page and I'm gonna show you what how it looks. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I got my lasso tool, and just like we did before, if I select it like that, uh, I can Command J. Uh, we'll put that one little bat on its own layer. See that? So that's just another shortcut, which is extremely valuable one. You're going to use it all the time, and I'm missing my type for some reason. So I'm going to oh, – I can make it larger, but we're going to make them smaller, all right? Double-click it, um, rotate it a little bit, and just sort of fill the spaces, right? And that's what we'll do. We'll just jump ahead now. So um, you just want to fill all the spaces and kind of get them all in there. So it looks like uh, like this, right? That was my type. So here's my um, here's the the other piece, right? So these are the components that we just had. That one we didn't do yet, uh, and we're gonna do it this way. So if you notice, my template is on, right? I can turn it on and off. And if you know, I got two layers here. So my full bat pattern. If I click it on. So that's when I move the layers and I just randomly put a bunch of bats everywhere. Okay. And I wanted to show you this because I think this next piece is kind of important as far as getting them, getting them to fit as you wrap around the, the thing. So um, changes, different sizes, that sort of thing, just sort of threw it in there. Um, and if you notice this one here where it says remove bat pattern, so I'm going to come here and do like that. Right. So look at the edge work. Right. So, I'm going to click on a new layer here and just kind of put it above and I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to get my red or actually I'll get a really bright green that, so you can see it. Hit my B for my brush, right? Because I just want to kind of show you what we would do. So uh, basically, if I did this, right, I would take my, I would cut my bats. Uh, let's do this one. Now, I can't remember which ones I cut out actually technically, but what I'm doing is I would have I would print this out and then literally take I would just cut this this way. Right. And leave this one. Maybe we cut this one out. We leave those two and maybe we cut this one out. Right. So I'm cutting those bats off of my print. And then this one over here is going to fill that gap. Nope. This one needs to come out. Right. Nope. Those are gone. So these stay. Uh, this one comes out and these come out because those stay. So once you do it that way, you get this, this pattern, right? So it's literally just going to fold in as you go around it. And this bat from this side is going to be, the, and the other one's going to go underneath. And it's just going to literally fall in like that. Uh, and it's going to look a completely random. You won't see um, any seams or anything because we tried to avoid that. Uh, and if we got any questions, I know we only got like five minutes left or a little bit less. Um, um, well, everybody is just, they love, absolutely love this. They're going to have to watch the replay. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of people want to know if they can watch it again. Yes, it is going to be recorded. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to mention this. I have handouts, so I can shoot over a handout. In fact, this um, see this little texture in the in the the words. I didn't have time to do it today, but uh, it, in the handout it even shows you how to do that. So um, 
if you I can send them I can send them the use sprite or they can contact me email me and I'll send it to them however we yeah you can you can just email it to me and I'll right. upload it to the session perfect um, perfect that works uh, I have one for tomorrow's class as well so yeah yeah and don't forget he will be doing a class tomorrow on affinity um, Ah, there's so many questions. I tell you what, you're going to have to go in here and answer some of these yep. questions. Um, I can do it. So uh, they say you're simply amazing. Thank you. Um, you make it look very easy. It is. It um, is. It's so cool. Definitely going to watch this again. Awesome. Uh, just all kinds of great stuff. Um, and I did put yeah. a link to your website in there. So if you guys want to go check out his website, he's got great designs, all kinds of fun stuff. And yeah. Um, so I, uh, we only have a few minutes left. I do want to go ahead and give the book away. Um, so that is the Dice Sub book. And uh, the winner is KB. So KB, if you will email me, uh, swood at condi.com. That's S-W-O-O-D at condi.com. And um, yeah. Uh, so just so she knows, the book is about a month, maybe a month and a half with printing away. So uh, I can, once we finalize it, because it's this close, uh, I can send her a PDF in the meantime kind of thing. And then when the book comes, I'll ship it to her. Okay. Yes. So KB, send me an email. I will, um, and and when Dane gets that book ready, we'll we'll go ahead and send it to you. And uh, and like I said, guys, you will be able to watch this on the app for the next three months. And uh, we are going to be release releasing this to our YouTube page um, uh, in a couple of weeks. So awesome! Yeah, well, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, and and send me those handouts so I can go ahead yeah. and post them in the I'll app. Do it right now. All right. All right. Thanks, Dane. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thank you, guys. Oh, uh, KB, I'll, I'll drop my email in the chat. Um, all right. Bye. I'll see you later, Dane. All right. Bye-bye.